Hey, what's going on guys? Mike here with my family. Not really my family, but my extended family for Phil Kraut Survival. I here with Sportsman's Warehouse at Wasatch Wing and Clay about, what are you, 30, 45 minutes outside of Salt Lake City? Yeah, about 45. Yeah, so we're, we're out here and I'm an avid hunter. I grew up hunting whitetail in North Carolina, uh, grew up fishing. And one of the things that we wanted to start doing with you guys is introducing you to some types of hunting across the country that you might not be interested in, but show you how easy it can be for novices like myself who's never been pheasant hunting before. I don't think I've ever shot a, a clay or shot a, a bird. Um, I've shot bird with the bow and arrow, but I, I don't think I've ever used a shotgun in kind of this capacity. But this seems like, man, I'm not hiking like 40 miles through the mountains, uh, a sawtooth to miss a, a bull elk. Um, but Rob, my director of marketing, and um, Amber, my director of family preparedness, is here with me for part of this experience. But Rob, you got experience doing this, right? Yeah, so I didn't grow up hunting, and I had the same experience where I was going out doing big game, and it was hard. Like, I didn't know what to do. I had to learn all these things, but shooting birds was something that got you experience. You were able to come out and have a good time, bring people together, and really just enjoy being outside. And it, it's been great. I, I love bird hunting. Amber, you you grew up on a farm. You grew up in the country in, in Louisiana, which is a different kind of country. Um, but but uh, what's your experience with bird hunting? Yeah, so I grew up hunting ducks. It's a very rich and rewarding experience. I feel like it was just part of our life. Um, opening morning was like Christmas morning. You know, we'd be so excited to get up and we'd go duck hunting together. And then we'd all clean our birds and then we'd go off to school because most of the time it was during the week and it was just part of our routine. And most everybody at school, it was a really rural community did the same thing. And then you get together and you cook your ducks. So it's a really great experience. And my kids have the same experience growing up. My little boy has pictures already with his, he's limited out with his ducks. That's all, I feel like um, bird hunting, fowl hunting is more family oriented. Uh, a lot of families grow up in it. I know a lot of buddies of mine who grew up in it and it's a family affair. You got the dogs, you got the kit, you got uh, all the experiences, you got the big cooking events that people do together. It's, just, it's more casual hunt that you can talk, you can enjoy the time together. I love bringing my son out and, and hunting and doing it with family and friends. And it, it's something that's really become special to me. It's, it's some of the greatest times. and. A lot of it doesn't even have to do with the birds, right? It's just being able to be together. I like that, man. And, and what we what we want to do in these these series is kind of give you an understanding of some of the hunts that are taking place throughout the country, bring awareness to that. Uh, talking about the conservation aspect, the birds, uh, the different animals that are involved, and also highlight the guides and the community of outfitters that are providing the services across the country. So what I want to do is talk to one of the guides here who's going to educate me personally because I'm the least experienced person here on how to do this. I mean, I showed up with my M4 or my nods, but but I, I want to talk to the experts. So we're going to kick it off to uh, talking with the guide, Tucker. all this cover we'll walk pretty slow so that she can work in front of us and she'll cross back and forth in front of us until she identifies a bird um, any of the pheasants she should get a pretty hard point on so she'll stop she'll essentially go like as a, to a statue pointing leaning into it with her nose usually she'll pick up a front paw and point in on a bird then we can if we're a little too far behind we can catch up get into good position kind of work a semicircle or a crescent kind of shape around her where we expect the bird to go a little bit. Um, good rule of thumb is if you do like a wedge out in front of you, like a you know, 90 degree wedge out in front of you, that's your shooting space in front of you. You go too far beyond that, you're crossing in front of your hunting buddies. So want to avoid that. Another good like rule of thumb like that is just have your shotgun be above level usually means you're not going to shoot don't our dog. Shoot the dog. <laughs> don't shoot the dog. It's the only rule. <laughs> we recommend not shooting people, but the only rule is don't shoot the dog. Yeah. So out here, they planted 20 rooster pheasants for us. 
So they're bright red. A lot of times when they flush, they'll make a sound, which is kind of fun. How'd that um, go? What's that? How did that sound go? <laughs> pretty good. I'm pretty good at it. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I said I wasn't calling them, but uh, you know, it's starting. Um, they'll flush like that. There might be hens out here uh, as well from previous hunts and things. Anything we see out here is safe to shoot. Okay. If it flies, it dies kind of scenario. I have very limited experience with shotguns, period. But we'll see. It's just, it's a game of patience. Reading this dog, and then hoping the bird comes up in your lane. So I just shot at my own my own first pheasant, and I horribly missed twice. I, I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. it kind of scared me. It, it popped up real fast and real close. I thought I thought somebody else was gonna shoot it, and so I waited. And then by the time it got in front of me, it was moving out. I thought I thought Amber had it, man. <laughs> I was in awe. I was just like, that's so pretty. me how fast it went up but um, getting the behind the gun um, really fast I realized like you don't have a lot of time it's get the gun up get the barrel aligned and break the shot while it's moving so let's see how many more we can get Chucker? Chucker partridge. Chucker partridge. A partridge. No longer in the pear tree. Got this one. Well, that was a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be. It's fun. But it was super fun. Yeah. What you know the, the best thing I like about this kind of hunting? since i missed so much there was always somebody to back me up yeah so that's kind of like the community aspect it's like you could have a novice shooter and you could buy him a little time put on the training wheels let him mess it up tucker what, what do you think the uh what do you think the hardest like how do you get better at this is it just experience you just it's keep all, doing it it's all about the reps out here i think you can never really plan for what the bird's gonna do it's you know it's still a wild animal out here I'm used to working with dogs in the military and kind of taking cues from them, but I could see you know the cues. But as a group, since there's different angles, there were instances where you couldn't see the dog, so you're dependent on everybody to kind of work together. Yep. And you can't just check out. You have to be kind of tuned in. Now I know why they have the ability to shoot two rounds. It's not for two birds. It's for <laughs> when you miss, and then you can make up for it. Um, I know we're going to do some... some uh, a little bit of cleaning up the birds and then potentially prepping them for for cooking you should go do that let's yeah. go do that let's go clean birds Hey, we were successful guys we um man 
Uh, I'm a newbie here, so everybody here is pretty experienced. And I, I thought going into this, uh, I learned a lot, and that I did. It was a fun experience. We talked a little bit about the, the idea of um, learning a new skill set, set, but also bringing community, friends, and family together. And it's a perfect way to engage your family. I mean, Rob, your 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 family grew up in this, right? Your your kids grew up in this. Yeah, my boy, he's, he comes out shooting for a while, and then we started bringing him out hunting a couple years ago. And so, get him out and get him out in the mountains, and he loves it. It's, shooting birds was a, was the easiest way to get him into hunting. Yeah, I love it. I, I I'm a big fan of it because um, it takes a collective effort. You can go out here and do it by yourself, but it's so much fun to do it with a whole bunch of good people. Um, big shout out to uh, Wasatch, uh, Wasatch, <laughs> Wasatch uh, Wing and Clay for allowing us to come out here and then, and I'll thank you Tucker, uh, thanks for um, being kind because I'm a new guy at this stuff and I don't pretend like I'm an expert at everything, even though most things I am. Um, but this was definitely difficult. We learned new skills, we harvested uh, birds, we just broke bread together. Um, it was an amazing experience. What, what you guys' feedback, your inputs? Amber, what, what about you? It was great. I mean, it, it was a little more action-packed than duck hunting, but it was it's fun. It's fun when it's a collective effort, and it's fun when everybody knows that they have different roles. You're not always the shooter. Sometimes There's you're helping out. There's not much teamwork in, in hunting, but you get to in pheasant hunting. Yeah, yeah, it was really enjoyable, and the conversation as we went along was really fun, too. Hey, guys, hope you enjoyed the experience. We, Philcraft Survival, enjoy doing this stuff for Sportsman's Warehouse. Sportsman's Warehouse.com, PhilCraftSurvival.com. Until next time, happy hunting.